Paul, you've got quite an array of, I'll say, roots and, and fruits mm -hmm. here, as well <laughs> as some nuts. So, yeah. Where would you like to start? Because there's so much to share and so much to talk about. Yeah, these are all uh, fruits or edible portions of plants that are uh, available right now. Um, over here, there's this passion fruit vine, which has this amazing purple flower that it gets. And um, it kind of takes over the place, vining everywhere, comes up, uh, you know, sends its roots through the soil. Yes, yes. And it gets this fruit, which this fruit isn't ripe right now. No, it's still a little early. But how yeah. much longer do you think? Um, I'm not sure. That's okay. a good question. But you can tell when they start to wrinkle up and they'll get soft. Um, but I think we should dissect it and see okay, what's inside. That's good. Because I think people will be familiar with passion fruit. You can see that it's got those, uh, just the massive seeds on the inside. Yes. Yeah. And I think so many people, um, you know, this is a great little treat, but the wildlife love it as well. Mm -hmm. It's yes. very, very popular yes. um, with the wildlife, but some people make jams and jellies out of mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, it's very delicious. Have to get those seeds out. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But passion fruit is a fruit is one, the passion vine, it grows like in a part shade, shade situation, mm -hmm. and it just really can be, I want to say, aggressive in the yes, garden. Yes, it's very prolific for sure, yeah. But if you're growing it for the fruit, yeah. you, you've got to yeah. balance it all. It's a beautiful plant. It is a beautiful plant with a beautiful flower. Mm -hmm. so, to go from passion fruit, though, to something not as pretty, what's mm -hmm. next on our list? Well, I brought in some uh, pieces of the cattail root. Uh -huh. um, this root right now, the, the cattails are, they're kind of tailing off towards the end of the season here, and they're starting to put their energy down into their roots. Okay. So the roots are full of starch. Oh, um, and this starch, um, you can see on the outside, it's just got this brownish skin, but when you split it, it's got these uh, white fibers. And oh, the nice. white is the starch that you can harvest from it. And I've actually got this little jar here. I uh, washed some of the starch out from the fibers last night. And what you do is you, you take the root and mash up the fibers underwater and the starch comes into the water and then it settles to the bottom of the bowl. Uh -huh. And then once it's settled, you can pour the water off and then use that flour. You can uh, mix it into uh, just like regular bread flour mm -hmm. or um, you can dehydrate it and set it aside or you could just take the starch and like boil it as a porridge or something like that. And it's just high in carbohydrates. And when you cook it, it actually gets kind of sweet. It's actually... So the starch is I, I don't know if I'd sugars. say delicious, but yeah. <laughs> it's it's a unique taste out in in the in the woods. Okay, so do they do you like peel? Yeah, it you, off yeah, or? you peel it apart, and you can see that oh my, it's just I full of fibers. Now. Yes. And then when you scrape it, there's all this like white goo, which is the starches that's okay. in there. That's yeah. Interesting. Yep. Very and interesting. This like small amount of flour that I got in here, yeah. that's from like probably eight sections of root like this so okay. it's a bit time intensive to, Pretty intensive. to get it and these are the these are the end shoots that were at the ends of the roots the roots were making their way through the mud right. yeah. ready to come up in the spring and these are really tender they just snap and they're really good sauteed or boiled but cat all cattail has to be cooked because if it's growing in a water source that has uh, various bacteria or viruses or things like that you want to kill off oh the definitely bugs. Yeah. yes and you, and you never want to harvest from a place where there's runoff from roads because the cattails will actually take up heavy metals right. and other pollutants and stuff. So this actually came from a source where I wouldn't actually eat this. I just brought it in for a demonstration. Okay. You'd have to really be selective about where Sounds you, And yeah. get permission. And get permission, of course, yeah. Yes. And also it's in a very sensitive environment. So it's not a good idea to just go out there and, you know, it's important to the wildlife. It's, yeah. it's, it does a yeah. lot, so. Sounds great. Well, let's move mm -hmm. along because our time is running along. So okay. um, tell us about what you've got here. Let's. Um. Yeah, so um, I've got some of these uh, black walnut, which is pretty common. And I've got one that I cracked open. In fact, this is the uh, <laughs> result of messing with this black walnut. It dyed so my sorry. skin brown. So <laughs> yes. you got to keep that in mind in case you have something special <laughs> to go to the at the end of the day. But I, I also brought um, a butternut in, which mm -hmm. is a tree that is related to walnuts, but it's, it's also called white walnut, and it's a little less common. You don't find yeah. it as, as often, but 
And some of the places where we hold our programs, we have secret butternut trees and the kids spend, will spend hours cracking them open and Wonderful. cooking them over the fire yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's got more of a football shape. It does, yeah. Versus the round shape. Yeah. So. And it has a different flavor too. It's almost reminiscent of banana, as some people say. Cool. So well, it's good. speaking yeah. of flavor, let's keep on moving along. We've All got right. our sassafras here. This is sassafras. This is a tree that grows pretty commonly around this area and it's got this beautiful color. Yes. And what I did was I took this root, this is some sassafras root right here, and I took a knife and peeled the outer bark of it and then simmered it for about five minutes and it gave me this this tea. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well mm -hmm. we have thirty seconds left and I want to get to Oh my to goodness. Yeah. Our, we gotta get to the pawpaws. And we've got to get to our pawpaws here. Yeah. And real quick, quick like a bunny, All right. as my so mom we got would this, say. We got this ripe pawpaw here. We mm -hmm. just got to open this baby up because And pawpaws, so you know, are, are common throughout low wet lands. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, low wet lands. And in order to harvest, you actually don't. You just pick them up off the ground. Because yeah. if you harvest them from the tree, mm -hmm. you'll find you'll have very, very bitter. Yeah, these came off the tree. They're very hard mm -hmm. and they're on the small size, but this is the ripe pawpaw. Mm -hmm. Should we eat a little bit of Let's it? Let's have a little bit of a All bite, right. and then we'll say. But you got to watch those seeds. Yeah, they've got these very large seeds yeah. in them. They're kind of beautiful, and you'll find them scattered on the ground where the um, wildlife has been mm. feeding on them. Mm, that's really good. That is a very really good pop -up. Yeah. You know, our wildlife enjoy these fruits mm -hmm. as much as we do. Yeah. And it's important that when we're out walking, that we take a look around and see what's there. Definitely. But also to learn and to get permission. Yes, definitely. And to make sure that we leave plenty for the wildlife. Yes, so. it's more important to them than for us, for yes, sure. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome.